Hi everyone, this is Stephanie Towery. I'm the Copyright Officer at University Libraries, Texas State University. And I'm here to um, take you through, walk you through, how to select usage rights for copyright when you upload documents or resources to Canvas. Um, just be um, aware that this is a, really specific to Texas State University and our particular instance of Canvas. We do have some uh, usage rights features that other universities don't have. So right now I'm, uh, I'm going to start from the files page. So if you're on the home page of your course site, just click on files and say you're just going to upload a file by clicking upload. I'm going to select Canvas Resources, that happens to be where I already am, and I'm going to upload one of these documents. Let's see, say I have to upload an article. So I'm just going to open it up, and you can see right here that there's a, a red exclamation point. And the box, when you hover over it, it says, before publishing this file, you must specify usage rights. So I can either click on that icon or I can go over here and manage usage rights. That's gonna open up this dialog box and we're just gonna fill it in. So usage right, choose usage rights. And what a usage right is, is basically the license or the right that you're asserting to distribute this resource. So you have a few choices. The first choice is you have the right because you hold the copyright. So you created it, um, uh, you own it, you own the copyright in it, and um, so therefore you have the right to share it with others. And I covered that a little bit in the other video, which generally talked about usage rights. So you can, you can refer to that video if you're interested in that, more about that. The second option is I have obtained permission to use this file. Now note that permission doesn't have to be written permission. It can be oral permission. It's always good to get written permission because it's a little bit easier to pull out that written permission if you get a challenge from someone but the law only says you can have oral permission. So say someone sent me a copy of an article that they wrote and I saw them at a conference and I said, hey, you know that article that you sent me, can I upload that to my course site? And if that person has the right, um, owns all the rights and hasn't licensed them away, um, then they can say, oh yeah, sure, and you can upload that um, to, your, to your course site, just relying on that oral permission. So the next one is this material is in the public domain. Now, public domain is a very specific legal term. It doesn't mean publicly available. So just because something is on the internet, that doesn't mean that and that you can download it. It doesn't mean that it's in the public domain. So we'll cover that in another video. The next choice is this material is subject to an exception or a right. Um, so fair use, um, the right to quote, um, or others under applicable copyright law. So another law that might be implicated is the TEACH Act. And then the final one is this material is licensed under Creative Commons. Creative Commons is a, a set of licenses that are usually free to share. For the most part, they're free to share. So we're gonna select um, the one that we think is right. We can't just go in and select any one, right? So I'm gonna cancel out of this and actually look at the document and see if it has a Creative Commons license on it or if it is protected by copyright. Ah, oh, I randomly selected this. This is a paper called Plagiarize This Paper by Brian Fry, and he's a legal scholar and, and he writes about plagiarism. Um, and he does include a, an essay on, I mean, a, a license on this essay. At the bottom here, it says this essay is licensed CC0 public domain 
and I specifically authorize plagiarism. Um, he talks about the legal concept of plagiarism in this article, um, and he's he's being a little bit tongue in cheek, but um, he does analyze the concept, and so um, it's a very it's a very interesting argument that he has about plagiarism. But the important part for us is that he has licensed it CC0, which means public domain. So because we know that, we can actually go over here to manage usage rights and we can select this material is in the public domain. You could also pick Creative Commons license, but public domain is actually more accurate. One of the Creative Commons licenses is CC0, and that indicates that the person who created it is um, wants to license, license it in the public domain. Depending on which country you're in, you may be restricted by the laws of that country and not be able to actually dedicate your work to the public domain. So it, it's actually more difficult than you would think to um, put a public domain license on something. Um, copyright holder, um, this is an interesting idea. There is no copyright holder if it is in the public domain, but you can always put the creator on here. Um, I'm gonna put uh, Brian Fry licensed CC0 just because that kind of gives me a little bit more information, and that's the only place I can put more information that's attached to the document. Then I'm going to click Save, and you see here you have the little icon that says Public Domain. I'm going to do another one to show you a different way that things are can be in the public domain. So I'm going to click Upload, and I'm going to select, I think this is it. 12-1315. It's a PDF. And I'm going to open it up so that I can see what it is. Because I can't really choose a usage right unless I know what it is. This is what's called a slip opinion. It is an early version or the first published version of a, um, a Supreme Court opinion. It's actually published by the United States government. It's published by the Supreme Court themselves and it contains basically the, the court's opinion on this case. Anything that is created by the federal government is in the United States is necessarily in the public domain by US law. This isn't always true of other countries, um, so it depends on the country, but the US federal created works are in the public domain. This isn't true of works created by contractors necessarily, um, so you have to you always have to check. I do know that this is in the public domain because it was uh, written by um, the judges on the Supreme Court, so I know that I can mark this public domain. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to select this material is in the public domain, and I'm going to put federal government author. You don't have to put that, but for the purposes of illustration, I'm going to put it. That way you never have to explain yourself later. And that's pretty much it. That covers public domain. There's other ways that things can be in the public domain. If they were published in the United States before 1924, then they're in the public domain. Um, as of this date today, which is um, to for 2020, um, so that's one way. Um, and you have to be careful with state governments and local governments. They all, uh, all of their work isn't necessarily in the public domain, so you have to look that up. Um, another way that things could be in the public domain is if they aren't copyrightable, um, and that's something that is difficult to it's difficult to know unless you know a little bit more about copyright but generally some things just aren't copyrightable facts aren't copyrightable data raw data itself is not copyrightable so if you were uploading something like that 
you could put it's in the public domain or put CC0 on it. And that's about it for this video. Um, I'm going to do some more about those other usage rights and examining a few other kinds of examples of things you might want to upload as a resource to your course site. Again, my name is Stephanie Towery and I'm the Copyright Officer at University Libraries, Texas State University.